Hi, I'm Karen Bass. Bullying has always been around. Today, the sense is that it's getting worse. Hi, my name is Maureen Elrich, and I'm the author of Power Plays, uh, which was published by Kato Books. It's a book about girls' hockey. Unfortunately, it's also a book about bullying. When I was in high school, back before the internet, and even before personal computers, if you can imagine that, there was a guy who was your stereotypical science nerd. I don't know how much he was bullied, but I do know that he was harassed at school. At the end of grade 10 or 11, he moved away. A few months into the next school year, we heard that he had completely reinvented himself at his new school and was now one of the cool kids. We were amazed. And for those of us who uh, were not in the cool crowd, it gave us a glimmer of hope that if he could change, then so could we. I was pretty fortunate to get through most of my schooling without being bullied. But I was, for part of my grade nine year, by two boys in my class. I danced with some of my female friends at a dance, and these boys labeled me as a lezzy. Dancing with my friends broke an unwritten code, and suddenly I was on their radar, which is a place someone with low status never wants to be. What's interesting is that I thought, until recently, that I was over this. Then while making plans to attend my 35th high school reunion, I learned that one of those boys was planning to come, and all desire to go abruptly evaporated. I didn't go. 35 years later, I am still a victim of bullying. Fast forward to 2012, and we have the tragic case of Amanda Todd, who even though she changed schools, her past and her status as bullied followed her through the magic of social media. And she felt so helpless, so convinced that things could never change, that she committed suicide. And for so long as anyone, student or adult, feels that desperate that they even consider suicide, we need to keep talking about bullying because silence gives the power to the bullies. Writing about bullying and giving kids some tools to help them deal with bullies was my way of reaching out to victims. If I'm able to help even one child feel more secure about getting up in the morning and going to school, then I am content. I hope Power Plays helps teachers and parents become more aware of what is going on around them and what they can do about it. Now bullying isn't just a problem for students to deal with. Everybody needs to come together on this, adults included. That includes teachers and librarians, authors, doctors, anybody in your community who deals with students. And it also includes the parents of the bullied children and the parents of the bullies. We all need to work together to rediscover and reinforce the idea that everybody deserves to be treated how we would want to be treated and no one wants to be bullied. As a middle years teacher, I saw many bullies and I saw many victims. I know I could have done more to help victims. I didn't always know who the bullies were in my classroom. Girl bullies, AKA queen bees, are very clever, but teachers and principals are clever too. A principal of mine once told me, some kids every day live out our nightmares. If you have the power, make the nightmare, make bullying stop. We Want You to Know is a collection of stories of inter interviews with kids from Norfolk County in Ontario talking about their experience with bullying. 
even though it takes place in one part of Ontario, their experiences are shared by kids all around the world. And they talk about what happened to them, how they felt about it, what they wished had happened by the uh, adults around them, and what they've learned from the experience. And at the end of each interview are questions that kids can think about, think about what they would have done in that situation, and learn to how to make better choices in the future. In Power Plays, my first book, Jesse is bullied by two girls. Kim bullies her at school by rallying the other girls in Jesse's class. Kim makes sure the girls exclude and later harass Jesse by wrecking her stuff, calling her names, even going so far as to trip her. Marsha, an older girl from the high school, thinks Jesse has slighted her and wants to beat her up. Jesse is threatened and intimidated by both these girls. Because she is new to the school and the city, she does not have a peer group to support her. She is afraid telling her parents or a teacher will only make the situation worse, so she suffers in silence. Drummer Girl didn't start out as a story about bullying. It is a story primarily about image and identity and peer pressure. Unfortunately, peer pressure often leads to bullying because people would rather join the mob than be the target. So in Drummer Girl, Sid ends up being the victim of a very serious cyberbullying incident. Now through the course of the story, Sid has to come to some realizations on her own. But she doesn't end up dealing with the bullies by herself. She has help. And that would be my message to students. Talk to an adult you trust if you're being bullied. Keep talking until they understand it's serious. Get help.